Okay, can everyone hear me and see the slide? Welcome, my name's Melissa Armo, and today I'm gonna do something a little bit unusual. I'm going to go through the last week of trades and then um, just quickly here in this PowerPoint, and then I'm gonna bring up my charts and we'll talk about the daily charts of all the stock symbols that I looked at last week. So for those of you that have never heard of me, my name is Melissa Armon. I own a company called The Stock Swoosh, and I do only gaps, and that's all I've ever done. So I teach gaps, I trade gaps, whether they're for day trades or options. Um, I created my own system, which I called The Golden Gap, and it's something that I, I teach a class on about once a month. So if you wanted to come and learn my system, I'm going to give you the information on that today as well. But, you know, I've talked to so many people since I began the business about six years ago the stock swoosh and so many people uh, are, are trading the market and they're not successful and I hear the same reasons over and over and over again which is why are you losing money and they say they do not have a successful system so a successful system is extremely important if you want to do well um, you won't make any money in the all at all consistently over the course of a, a year's time or let alone longer without a successful system however if you have a successful system it's no guarantee though that you'll be able to implement it right why a lot of people have issues or problems with discipline okay what do I mean I mean we're gonna talk about the trades last week but I usually only look at one ticker symbol a day or do one trade a day sometimes too but there are some people that are in my trading room that over trade, that still over trade. So it's a habitual thing. And so with a good system and good discipline, you can be successful in the market. And I try to encourage people uh, to follow the system, to follow me in the trading room. And one of the things that I do that's unique is I close the room down every morning right after we're done. So the room opens at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. I usually start talking between 9, 9.15. And then we close it whenever we're done. Could be 10, could be 10, 15, could be 10, 30, could be 11 a.m. I do not encourage people to trade in the afternoon. And if you've ever traded in the afternoon, you know that as the day goes on, it gets more difficult, more difficult to make money trading as the day goes on because you have all kinds of things that can affect your stock trade. The market, news, commentary that comes out. And in the morning, when we're looking to get in and out in a few minutes, you're not going to be really, really affected that much by really anything. So many of the trades we're going to talk about today are quick in and quick outs, okay? So this was the tracking just from last week. It was a really good week. Right now, this entire month of August is a busy, busy time to be trading my system. Why? Because it's earnings season. So the stocks that we look at are well-known companies or names, or you would have heard of many of them, the ticker symbols and they report their quarterly earnings four times a year. So it is earnings season in July and August, and it's really up through until the end of this month. I looked up to just see, uh, it really is running into the end of August. So this is me. If you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com or go to 929-3200-GAP. Uh, you could reach out, you can call me. I'm still available to talk to people, to answer questions via phone, our email if you have anything you'd like to ask me so this was first of all Monday last week um, there were no trades okay my sister ran the room there wasn't anything good to do so that was Monday so there will be times when you won't have any good gaps and then the, the, you don't trade okay you don't try to force things to work when they're not there now Tuesday was LL and I'm just gonna quickly go over this here what the what the move was in this this was a short okay this is a one minute chart so if you took an advanced risk which are all these trades in here but you do not have to take an advanced risk it's around fifteen hundred dollars you would have shorted the stock from the gap down so the stock closed here gap down here's the open it's 9 30 this is 9 31 so you would have just gotten boom and you would have gotten right out so this was in a very quick trade now i want to show you here this is the volume down here the volume bar here was really really big okay and this was a fairly big move in 60 seconds and even if you look at the two minutes here okay in two minutes from the time the stock opened till it came down if you look at the price point here at around 19 dollars or wherever it opened this is a pretty big move you may think it doesn't look like much but it's profit okay so you could have shorted this here and got out and made fourteen hundred dollars and this is something that i'm extremely good at and this is something that you would learn from me all right so ll was a short 
Cake was another short. This was a huge one, okay? I really was in love with this gap. This is not a one minute chart. I'm showing you here, this is a 15 minute chart. But it shows the gap better. Stock closed up here around 56 the day before and opened in the morning around 49 something. Okay, so the stock gap down. This all here is the first 15 minutes of the day where you can see the stock sold off. And then you can see here, this is later in the afternoon, the stock sold off really for the entire day. We are gonna look at this daily chart of this. You could have done one trade in this, two trades in this. You could have done this four or five times of the day, in, out, in, out, in, out. Even in the morning, the stock had multiple drops. It was an extremely good bearish move, okay? So Wednesday, this was Wednesday, was cake, okay? Trip was Thursday, another short. Again, I like the shorts. And, it, and for those of you that don't know me, I do prefer to short most of the time. Occasionally, we'll go long in the run. But anyways, this stock closed the night before up here at 57 something, opened, gap down, opened around 51 whatever, and fell. So in this tail, okay, was the short play in the trip. So this tail, so when we, when we did the trade, we got in this tail and got this drop, okay? So this is a daily chart here of trip, but you can see here how this is expert trading in its finest because we got the tailing move and that's not as easy to do. You can see here how this bar is fat and red. It's a lot easier to get moves like that where the stock just opens and falls from the open until the close. That was not what this was. But this was a really, really nice gap. And this was the trade in the, in the trip. And again, I'm gonna bring up all these charts for you to show you in a minute, but I just wanna go over um, the profits in here for you. Entry in the trip was 49.98. That means you short it, okay? And I call the live trades in the trading room. Stock move what? A dollar and a half, basically. More than that, actually, on the live day, but the move was about a buck fifty, okay? That is all that you need, really, in a stock. You you can you can make half that and be enough for the for your day. The idea of day trading is to get in and out. Now. Again, for those of you that have never heard of me before, my system is related to a point system. So I'm determining wh whether or not I want to trade the stock based on the rating. It's a rating system that I do each morning before I trade and chip rated 22 points. So I saw this gap in the morning in the pre-market and I said, you know what, I'm going to rate it. And I rated it with my system. And if you came and did my classes is what you would learn from me, okay? It was a short, it rated per my system good enough to watch to short, and then we did it. So I am not getting in any stocks in the pre-market, just so you know, or the post-market. I think that's a very dangerous time to trade, but I'm determining in the pre-market, okay, or even at night in the post-market, if something is good. If it looks like I want to watch it, to short it in the morning, or go long, like I said, but it's, we're usually not going long, okay? So anyways, getting back to what I was saying when I started talking today, if you wanna be successful, you have to have a system. Because otherwise, what are you doing? When the market opens at 9.30, what are you doing, okay? You're following aimless people, you got the television on, you're looking at stuff in your inbox or on the net, you know, you're, or you're aimlessly going around in multiple trading rooms, you really don't have a 100% focus on what you are supposed to be doing, and I'm telling you, it is very important, very important to have a focus. It, you know, think of it like this, and I'm gonna use this as an example. Um, and, and, and this goes for actually all these trades, because cake was, cake was a big trade, trip was a big trade. Um, you know, but when, you're, when you get up, and, and even if you don't trade big size, even if you don't, even if you cannot do this trade, okay, even if you cannot take 2,000 shares of trip, which, which many of you may be able to do, but say you couldn't, say you can only take 500 shares of trip, a thousand, okay, say you could take a thousand shares of trip, how much buying power would you have needed? Approximately 50 grand in BP, okay, that's buying power, that's not cash, it's buying power in a day trading account. Say, in order to, to do that, you would have made, what, half this, so that's still $1,400, it's still a terrific day, it's an amazing day, how could you have done it? You would have had to have focus, okay? You would have had to have 100% focus because for anyone at all to be able to make $1,400 working less than six hours a day, less than eight hours a day, less than an hour a day, takes extreme focus, okay? 
So think of it like this. I appear on television. Wait, ha hang on one second. Is there a problem with the sound, Kathy? Okay, can everybody hear me? Okay, what I was saying was, um, when you're when you're trading to make twenty eight hundred dollars in a few minutes, or to make half that fourteen hundred dollars in a few minutes, okay, you have to have extreme focus, okay, focus, focus, focus. So how do you do it, okay? Think of it like this: I appear on t television. This is what I was saying. I appear on television, and I might be on for two minutes, three minutes. Sometimes I get to talk the whole three minutes. Sometimes I'm on with three or four other people. And in the three minutes that the segment lasts, I might have 30 seconds to talk. So if I only have 30 seconds to talk on live TV, then I have to be extremely focused in my mind about what I want to say, okay? And it's very much like that with trading, okay? And I'm good at doing both, okay? <laughs> When you do this, when you actually go and you actually press the button and you're doing this and you're trying to make this much money, okay, very, very quickly to the tune of several thousand dollars, whether it's fourteen hundred, two thousand, six thousand, whatever, okay, you must be focused. And, and, you know, even if you can't take a large size in a trade, Getting back to what I was saying originally, say you can only take 500 shares a trip or 200 shares a trip or 100 shares a trip. If your goal is ever to get to the point, okay, of being, you know, uh, able to take bigger size or trade for a living or make a couple hundred grand a year trading, you have to have the mindset of the focus at the very, very beginning, at the onset, okay? Does that make sense? So you've got to be focused, you've got to be 100% where you want to be in the moment if you are day trading. And even if you say you take a trade and you're in a trade for even a whole entire hour, all right, bottom line is you still have to be focused because many people work for eight hours a day at their job to make this kind of money or longer. And even if you're only working an hour, it's a condensed period of time to make several thousand dollars. You've got to be focused. You cannot be all over the place. And I think so many people, all right, are not focused when they trade. They are not focused enough in a system. They're not focused enough on one stock pick. Does that make sense? All right. Okay. Going on with what I was talking about before. Let's talk about Apple. So Apple was not a day trade, but an option trade that I called. Again, based on what? Based on my system, the Golden Gap, but this was a buy, okay? It was to buy calls. And the reason I called it as an option was because of the fact of the price point. So sometimes you will day trade stocks like Trip or Cake. And sometimes it's good to do options in them. Why? Because they're a little bit more expensive. So it's just easier, easier to get in and easier to maybe even hold them for a bigger move when you don't have to worry about buying power or something called margin. And if anyone doesn't know what that is, then ask me. Anyway, so more, some of the expensive stocks, there are options. So here the stock closed here, then it gapped up. Open here around, I don't know, 199 something rallied this is day one and in the case of the option i'm going to show you the trade in a minute it had a really big move and it could have moved even further higher up and i actually apple is still on this trade is expiring august 10th the stock still looks higher today i can we're going to pull it up in a minute but anyways you could have gotten out the first day or you could have gotten out the second day this is not an equity trade this is an option trade so this is another way to day trade without having to worry about margin or buying power. People say, well, you need a lot of money to, to, to day trade. Well, it depends if you want to do equity trades or it depends if you want to do options, okay? You don't have to worry about the cost of the stock in relationship to doing an option trade, whether you buy a call or a put. You only have to worry about the cost of actually the trade itself, which varies. 
So this was a trade I called. To buy the Apple calls, the strike was 200. This was just a great call. And I called this in the pre-market. Note the time, it was August 1st before that day even opened on the 1st. And then it ran up on the 2nd. It was at 7.52 in the morning, okay? And this is still on. I don't know if anyone is still in this trade, but it still looks higher. It's, it's hit the first target, it hit the second target, and it's almost at the third target here today. It's got two more targets. I put sometimes some of these numbers in here, like the, like the uh, dream target. It doesn't mean you hold them till there. Your goal really is to get every trade to the first target, or sometimes the second target. In this case, it was such a big move, it almost got to the third target really within the first two, three days of the trade, and that's unusual. So that's why it ended up being a really big trade. Anyways, the option price was what? $1.90. And, and you, you might have gotten filled a little bit less, a little bit more. I know one person emailed me and it got filled at 160 okay? So, but let's say it got filled at 190 all right? What would that have cost you? 20 contracts for 2,000 shares is what, $3,800. Now that's not, that's not nothing. It's a decent a risk. But if you had risked $3,800, you would have made $13,400 on this trade. And that is within two days, two days, two, count them two, one, two, that's it. That's huge. Wednesday to Thursday. So you would have taken the trade on the Wednesday and you would have exited the trade on a Thursday. And actually it went past even 860. I didn't check it today because I, I, I really don't think anyone else is probably in it, but it does look still higher. Return on investment in this trade, this was an Apple option trade from last week, 352%. So a lot of times I get, I mean, I get, I get all these conversations I have with people. Oh, I lost money in the market. Oh, I did this. Oh, I did that. You know what? There's, you have to learn what to do. And I've said this a million times, or you will never make money. But every once in a while, you will get some huge, huge bonkers trade. Once you start to get in a groove of consistency, you will, you will just do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, and then every once in a while, you will get a big one. You just will, once you're showing the consistency. But you'll never get a huge trade like this, okay? Unless you are consistently looking for the correct things, which in the case, always for me, and I'm gonna go back to the chart of Apple, is the gap. So the stock gap up, and this was again from Tuesday night to Wednesday morning. Called the trade in the pre-market on Wednesday morning, ran up Wednesday, ran up Thursday. And it's, and again, this is still higher, but you only have a few days left. So big trade. The idea of being successful has to do with a good system and the consistency of applying that system, all right? But when people tell me, oh, I've lost so much money and oh, your class is expensive and all this or that, it's like whatever. You still have to learn what to do. My system works, it's so much worth the money. And um, some people with me are having a big year. I mean, some people with me, are having a big year. And the people that are not having a big year are struggling with discipline issues, which is something that I try to help people with, but ultimately is up to you. And, and that is one of the things where I say, you know what, you're, we're all adults. I mean, I think the youngest person that I ever taught, he was like 21 or 22. Um, and I'm, I, think, I think I've taught someone that was close to 80, you know, I, I, so I've taught some older people as well. Um, but everyone has to, take stock of their own choices, you know? And many, many times, you know, people just kind of go out in a haywire fence because this was a great trade, but not every trade will be this big. So you have to have normalized expectations. And then once in a while, you get a gap that's so good, and then you run with it. Now, how do you know? First of all, if you're in the trading room with me, I'm telling you. <laughs> and second of all, the rating system. So the rating system is a 26 points. What does that mean? The 26 points means that the higher the rating, the better the quality of the gap. So if you have a gap that rates really well, then that gap is one you might wanna hold to a bigger target. You might wanna hold a little bit longer. You might wanna trade two or three times in the day. It might have a bigger possibility for a bigger move, all right? But not every gap is, gonna, is created equal even with the rating system, because there's a six point cushion. So if, if you come and you learn my system, this is how it works. It's 26 points. If the gap is rates 20 points or more, you take the gap in the direction of the gap, whether it's a long or a short, okay? 
If it rates under the 20, the rule is you do not trade it at all. And if it's an 18 or a 19, it's a 50-50 chance of working or failing because that's still really just shy of the 20 points and it might work. And every once in a while, I might call a 19 point rated gap in the room and we might make money doing it. But I would say don't do that without my direction. But the rule is really 20. Okay, the rule is really 20. And it's especially in a bullish market, which we are still in a bullish market. We've, we never broke the, 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 the uptrend in this market. Rich said I'm great, thank you, Rich. Um, <laughs> any questions so far from anyone? Okay, just, just write them in the room if we do. I'm gonna pull up the charts in a minute, but I think this is a good review of last week. Um, the one problem margin account being called out, there's one problem, margin accounts can be called out and put out for 90 days. I don't understand your question. If you do not need a margin account to do options, you need a margin account to, to take a day trade like in the trip. So I'm confused your question, Rich. If you want to, if you want to do an option trade and buy a call or a put, you can open up an option account that's not a margin account. You could have one account where you do it all, but then you have to have whatever amount of money the broker tells you you need to day trade. And you also have to fill out forms to have it set up as an option account. And if you can do it all on your platform, you're good. If you want to have two separate accounts, then you can open up two separate accounts. That may be overly complex for you. I'm not, I don't think I understand your question. The Apple trade was not an equity trade. It was an option trade. You can hold it overnight and the margin had nothing to do with it. I think, I think what you were asking me is about holding Apple overnight, but you, but it was not an equity trade. It was an option. The cost of holding Apple overnight would never have been $3,800 <laughs> for 2,000 shares. Here, what did that open? Because let me just look. Let's just say, let's just say 199er, just to make it easy. Now just listen, seriously, think. This is a funny one, but I think this is what uh, Rich is trying to say. $199 per share times, here I'm gonna give this math to Philip times 2,000 shares, you would have needed what? Now, just look at the margin, and then we'll talk about cash. That is a, a question for Galahad. Um, Galahad can figure that out in his calculator while I answer Al's question. How long does it take to evaluate the 26 points? Well, I've been doing this for 10 years, so I can do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> But if you're new, it's probably going to take you about five, I say five to eight minutes, five to eight minutes to rate a gap if you're brand, brand new. Once you get good at doing it and you're doing it, doing it, doing it, you can do them in two to three minutes, like after a couple of, couple of weeks, couple of days. But for me, I can, I can just look at something and say, woohoo, like I literally, seriously, I literally rolled out of bed, whatever day that was, Wednesday morning. I forget if I went to the gym. I don't think I even went to the gym Wednesday morning. I slept in, I rolled out of bed, opened up Apple, and I said, uh, do do do, and I just sent the trade out at <laughs> seven seven fifty or whatever time this was. What whatever time this was. I was half asleep. I was like, oh my Lantia. And that was really actually risky because I sent this trade out an hour and a half before the open. And it may not have even opened, it may not have looked completely different. Like I was, I didn't even, I just was, I was half asleep. I said, holy crap, do, do, do. And I just sent the trade out. Nobody could take that trade until 9.30. And it would have, it was really kind of risky to do because of the fact that the gap may have failed, looked different, did something different between 7.52 when I sent the trade out at 9.30. But I've been doing this so long. Like sometimes I just know. I said the same thing about cake. For those of you that were there in the Alpine house last week, Rich was there. I, I said when I got on the mic, and I think it's online. I think I have the video from the room online. You can go on my YouTube. I said, cake is great. Cake is amazing. Cake is terrific. Cake's going to work. We're not looking at anything else but cake. So, you know, you get to a point where in your mind, you have, like, it's like a memory pattern. It's like... The best way I can describe it is, I mean, once you get used to doing it, you're doing it faster. And then you, it's almost like you just have everything in your head. Like, I don't know if I can explain what I'm trying to say. It's like, it's just, it's, you just, it's just part of you then. You just know it. It's like, you just know. 
I still go through the process. I still rate every single solitary gap we trade in the morning before we do it. I rate every one. I go through the process, but there is a million days out of the year that I get up and I say, oh, this is going to work. Do, do, do. I know it. And that is because I've been doing this for 10 years. So how do you get to that point? You do it, 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 do it, do it, do it, do it. And then what happens is you're so, at some point it goes from the learning to the knowing. And what is that point? I, I, you know, it's different for everyone. So when with you come and you say you do my class, okay, and, you, and then you learn it and you're learning it and you're learning it and you're learning it and you're learning it. And while you're learning it, I'm guiding you and I'm saying this is good and you do it and this is good and you take the trade when I call it. But you're learning as I'm calling it until whatever that point is that the learning and the knowing just mesh and then it then then you reach a higher level and that is where to be honest with you you really want to be because when you get to the point where you you where the information is just inside of you and you don't have to process it intellectually let me tell you this right now and this is very important you will be able to make this kind of money and you will be able to make more you the the, uh, the idea the thought of making twenty six thousand dollars in one week will not be foreign to you or let alone a month, okay? You will not, you will stop thinking that it's impossible and you will start thinking that it's possible because you will just do it. What do I mean? I mean when the trade sets up, you won't hesitate and you'll take it when I call it. And not only that, you'll take the risk. You'll plop the size on and you won't be afraid. So many people, even people that have money, okay? Now people that do not have big accounts, Say people that have small accounts. If you have a $2,500 day trading account, which you can day trade by system with a $2,500 account, but you cannot risk $1,500 in trade. It would be ridiculous to risk half your account in one trade. No one should do that. But the point is, you want to build up to that. If you have a small account, you want to build it. You want to build it up, okay? But even if you have a big account, you can't put the signs on unless you are in that place where you are okay with the risk. So how do you get to that point where you're okay with risk and you're not trading in fear, which is how many traders trade? You know it. You know it and you get out of the intellectual side of it in your mind when you're doing it live because you know it and you have the conviction. So I do the prep work in the morning ahead of time so that in the moment I'm there. So, so that I don't, because there, there is not like a hundred hours to think it through. Oh, should I do it? Maybe do it. This is a, the trade's gone. The trade is gone. Trip fell off a planet. You missed the whole move. All the money is busted. It's totally, totally gone. Does that make sense? Does anything I just said make sense? It was a pretty good lecture. All right, let me answer the other questions. Um, hang on one second. Um, okay, so the next question was, I think, I think I answered Al's question. Um, how many stocks should I look at per day on average? I look at, you know, in earnings season, I might look at 10 or 20, but I'm scanning, I'm scanning, I might pick and decide to rate four or five or six, okay? In non-earning season, two or three. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm narrowing it down. Um, there's no scan, separate scanner that I use other than with the platform. Okay, so the platform scanner is good enough. Um, if you want to buy a separate, separate, separate one, it, it, you can. Okay. If you want to buy a separate scanner, that's totally up to you. Um, Michael, you can use any broker that you want. You can use any broker. There's people all over the world that are trading in the room with me. I'm, I, you know, I'm not a broker. I teach you how to do the system. If you want a referral, I can refer you to someone, but you can go wherever you want. Uh, Rich, I did I answer your question, Rich? Galahad must be sleeping because he didn't answer the Apple question. So I'm going to write it in the room here. Hold on. We were talking about the uh, about buying power. Rich, did I answer your question? I think Rich was trying to figure out how, what would he do? He would need 398,000. This is going back to the Apple. And then I'll put the chart up. Oh, I did miss it. And Michael answered it too. I missed you both. Sorry, we had a couple questions there. Um, yeah, you're both right. Rich, you would not have needed $398,000 to take this trade. You would have only needed $1.90 to take at least one. 
one contract would have cost you what 190 bucks so a, 10 contracts would have cost you 1900 follow me so it, holding this overnight was not in a margin account it was an option account it was an option trade rich let me know if it answers your question if anybody else that has any Um, all right, so getting back to what I was saying, and this is a good, this is a good segue into it. Um, you, to get to the point where you move off the intellect, you have to get good at doing something, which is, which is what I've done for myself, and I'm teaching people how to do that. You know, until you, it becomes a knowing for you, then the bottom line is you have to just follow me and apply the system if you're in the trading room with me as we're doing it. But I try my best to make it easier for people. So before I pull up the live charts, I'm just going to tell you about the next couple class dates. The, my class is called the Golden Gap Course. Class is August 18th and 19th, which is the end of August in two weeks. Cost of the tuition for the class is $54.99, and it's 9 to 5 Eastern time. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. And then I also teach a trends course. It's August 20th. Okay, so it's going to, if you want to do both classes, you get a discount. This class separately is $1,000. This is online, but you get a discount if you pay for both. You get 500 off. So you would take the trends course, which is for long-term trends, and the gap course would be three days. It's Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday if you want to do them all together. Okay. And then I have an options letter. If you just want to sign up for the options letter, you get the options trades emailed to you. It's an annual subscription, and that's three grand a year. The letter's emailed to you. You get the trades and take them. Okay. All right, so let's pull up some charts. And let me just quickly put my email here in the room. If anyone wants a trial to the live trading room this week or next week for the class, email me. Okay. All right, let's talk a bit about the charts. Um, where were we? Okay, let's go back to, let's talk about trip. So again, what is it that I'm looking for? When I get up, I'm looking for what? I'm looking for what the gap's gonna do. Is the gap going to continue? If it's gapping down, selling off. The only way you can make money shorting something, and here, I don't wanna confuse you. This is, let's look at the day that the trip ha gap happened. So there, it was the second, I think. Um, when, when I get up in the morning and I'm looking for the gap, okay, I, I'm looking for what I want to see happen. I'm looking, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I can predict where it's going to go. If I can predict where somebody's going to go, then I can make money taking it in the direction before the move happens. Because after the move happens, it's really, what can you do? You're either chasing it or you are trying to figure out how to get in without being down before you're up. Actually, you know what? Let's look at Netflix. This might Netflix might be a better. Netflix might be a better example here of what I'm trying to get across. I didn't even look at this at all today, so let's just see where Netflix is. And any other questions right in the room? So say, say you, I'm going to go back and see if I find a good example. Say you wanted to, say, say, say you missed this whole move. Oh, hold on. Rich has a question. Let me, let me answer Rich's question before I make my point here. Um, What are you talking about Tuesday through Thursday? You lost me about Tuesday through Thursday. Every day, every day there's a possibility to have a gap Monday through Friday. Some days are busier than others. I would say Monday is the slower of the days. 
but I can't really pick a, a, the busiest day of the week. I couldn't really tell you necessarily. I'm not sure what you mean. I totally am lost by your question there, Rich. If you only have two or three days to trade, that's all you got. That's all you got. If you only have two or three days to trade, you could trade Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You could trade Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'd say money's is the slowest. What about buying stocks? Write your whole question out in its entirety because I'm losing what you're saying there. The market's open Monday through Friday. You could trade every day, but there, some days there isn't a good gap. So that, that could be on a Monday. That could be in the middle of the week. But, you know, in earnings season, there's usually something good all the time. But in not earnings season, there is times where there's nothing good that we don't do anything, and it might be on a Thursday. So you just, it's, you know, I can't predict that. I won't know until the stocks gap. Like tonight, there's stocks that are reporting tonight. I have, I have no idea if, if anything's good. I haven't looked at anything. Okay, getting back to what I was saying here. Let's say you missed this whole massive move in Netflix. You missed it. The stock gapped up back in January. I think that was the earnings. Yeah, it was. Around 250. Ran up, made brand new all-time highs. Ran up, ran up, ran up. The stock has almost doubled in price. Actually, it has doubled in price since January. We look at the beginning of the year and Netflix, this darling stock, opened. Low in the year in here in January was 195.42. It went, it did double in price. So it doubled in price up to the tippy tippy top on 621 to 423. So if you had bought Netflix when you rolled out of bed on January 2nd, right after New Year's, you would have doubled your money this year. No lie. There it is. You can look at it. Boom. So say you didn't. You didn't do it. You said, gosh darn it, I knew I should have did that thing. I don't know why I didn't buy that thing. I knew it. And you didn't buy it, say, because you thought it was too expensive. You're like, there's no way this could keep going and it's just too expensive. I'm going to wait for a pullback, you say to yourself. Or whatever thing you say to yourself. So you don't buy it on January 2nd. You try to wait for a pullback. It never comes. The stock ran straight up. Never pulled back, then gapped up here. In fact, it ran up 60 points within less than two weeks, three weeks, and never pulled back. This was the earnings. Never pulled back here, shot up again, almost got to 300 in the first shot. So once again, the stock ran up 100 points with no pullback, and you say, gosh darn it, I gotta get in this thing, but I don't know where, I'm gonna wait. So you don't know what to do. You think it's too expensive. You wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, and it never comes. So what do most people do? They miss moves like this. And then they decide to buy in pullbacks, which is absolutely not the way that I trade. But anyways, they buy pullbacks and then they are down before they're up. They tend to kill the trade because they're down and they get scared. They never have conviction it's gonna go. They blame the market, this, that, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And they don't make money overall even though they love Netflix, and then they just say to themselves that they missed it, and then what happens? Then it goes and goes and goes, and they miss it again. Now, this is an example of a, of a bullish move, but it's the point can be taken for a downward direction as well. Okay? Momentum comes in when stocks are getting bought by institutions, or momentum comes in when stocks are getting sold off by institutions. So you want to short that or buy the Netflix when it's getting bought. You don't want to wait for the pullbacks. Now, that's not to say that every bullish gap in Netflix could be bought because it can't, okay? And it can't in any stock per se. But I'm telling you, when you find a gap that's a quality, quality, quality gap that rates well per my system, and this is how you would apply my system, and this is why if you came to me, the reason to learn my system, you would know then that you could take a position, a long position, and that it will hold that it will hold like a rock, at least enough for you to get one move in it or two moves in it or maybe three moves in it, okay? So many people, when they are trading, they're not sure what to look for. And many people are trying to find stocks that they're trying to take into pullbacks if they're going long or pullbacks in the reverse if it's rallying to resistance for the short. And then they tend to get shaken out. And that's often what happens and then people lose. And when people trade and lose money, whether it's one trade or one week or a year of their life where they didn't lose every day that they traded, but maybe they lost some days and made money some days, but at the end of the year they lost and they got frustrated and then they feel like it can't be done or they can't do it or it's just a racket or whatever. 
That is how a lot of people think. But quite frankly, a lot of people are doing things in the market that they shouldn't be doing. And I just explained to you like the mentality is, like many times people will say, well, that's just gone too far, or it's just too expensive, or I have to wait for a pullback, or it's not good to take it here, or whatever, whatever the case may be. And then they don't do it, they miss the move, they chase it, okay? And then they end up obviously getting it in a bad place and being down, all right? So having a system will prevent you from making mistakes like that. Either it's there or it's not. Then the, you, don't, you don't have to overvaluate it. Because trading something like pullbacks, which many people do, is not a strategy. It's just not. If every pullback worked in every stock to buy and go long, even in an uptrend, even in the moving averages, no one would ever, ever lose money trading. It would be very easy to trade. You'd wait till the pull back comes into the moving averages. You go long and you'd make money and you'd get out. It doesn't work. It's not a strategy that you can make money consistently. Sure, sometimes they work, but not all the time. I wouldn't even say they work even more than 50% of the time. And yet that is how many people trade. So I'm looking for the institutions. What are they doing? Are they buying? Are they selling? And then I'm playing with those moves. And so I'm predicting not the gap itself, but where's the stock gonna go after it gaps? So after it gaps, I rate it. I rate it at night or in the pre-market, but usually in the pre-market and in the morning. And then determine if the stock is a long or short, and we typically do go short. Now in the case of Apple, it was a bullish call, so it was, it was, it was a bullish gap, all right? But either way, you're going with the institutional move. And here I'll pull up Apple. <coughs> Excuse me. Does anyone have any questions about anything at all? Apple's still higher. Holy crap. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm not saying anyone should even be in it, but this is, looks like in the next week it's going to get to 215, which is crazy. No one's even going to sell their position in Apple now, now and no one's going to short it. Wow. This is just going to go straight up. This is, a great, this is another great example. So this is, this, this is a great call. It's just a great call. So, high today was 209, 209.25, basically at the third target, and it looks like 215 is in sight. And I mean, who the heck knows? This could be, who knows? I don't even want to say. But this is getting bought. And I can, I can tell that this is getting bought. And not only that, I could tell that, I could tell that when I made the call in the morning on the first. And then, I mean, there's no one here is going to, you will see no red. When there's no red, you only have green or the stock doesn't move. So Apple's getting bought. I wouldn't buy it here, but to be honest with you, you could. <laughs> it's higher. So you got to play with momentum. If you want to be up, I have to take the trade. And you got to play with momentum if you want to be up at all consistently. Momentum means the M is money. Momentum, money, it's synonymous. It's the same idea. Yes, you could have done cake options. Sure, you would have bought puts. And all the options trades that I call are not complex. It's just you buy the call or you buy the put, and that's it. So it's very, very simple to follow. And you could day trade the options. I mean, theoretically, you could have bought a put in cake and gotten out of a put in cake on the same day. But I think what Rich was asking me is if you don't have an active day trading account or margin account, then you cannot be in and out, in and out, in and out of option trades like in one day. So you have to take one one day and get out the next day. But if you have a margin account that's set up that you can be in and out, you could do options trades as day trades. That's okay. The broker will let you do that. Either way, you can set up whatever type of account you want. You just have to follow their rules and their cash requirements. Make sense? So we'll see what we get this week. I have not looked to see what big ones are out this week, what big companies are out. I have no idea. Um, I haven't looked at all. But, um, you know, August is a busy month to trade and there'll be stuff to do. Does anyone have any questions?
you know, the biggest thing that I think that that I can tell you that's something that's worthwhile, that's completely free, is that if you want to be successful, you have to have a focus. And you better be focusing on what is what counts. Because even if you're focused, if you're focused on something that's crap, you're not going to make any money. So you need to have focus. But you have to be focusing on what counts. And that's what I do. So that's what you come and learn from me. And if you don't have a focus, you're sure to fail. You're absolutely certain to fail. And if you're focused on the wrong thing, you don't have a chance at all because you're focused on something that just doesn't work. Yeah, we're, we're, we're done a little early here, but I have some time for questions. Here, I'll pull up the market. Couple good questions tonight. Rich, I hope I answered all of yours. Market is looking good here. Let me look. Let's see where we close today. High was 285. Wow, look at that. So barring any tariff news, <laughs> the market should continue higher tomorrow. I'd be shocked if we don't rally tomorrow. So I don't, you know, something could happen. Something could happen crazy tonight. I don't know. We live in an environment where news comes out and then poof, the market moves and has a big move up or down. But barring any, you know, barring no news, just a normal activity tomorrow, market should rally and continue higher, no matter where it opens, up, down, neutral, whatever. So we, 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 we look strong, we look higher, we look good. And um, it's just a good time to trade. So think about what I said tonight. Some good questions, some good stuff. If you would like a trial to the trading room, you can email me, okay, there, and if you have questions about the class, you can email me there as well. Good questions tonight. If you think of any other questions, you can email me too. I hope everyone has a good week, a solid week. And um, thanks for having me, Kathy. All right, have a good night, everyone. You're welcome. Thanks.